So the next thing that we're going to look at are cascading style sheets. So CSS is what we use to style a lot of things at once. It cleans up the way things look compared to writing inline CSS or stylings, which I showed you earlier, which was where we put the style inside of the HTML tag. So let's start by looking at our motivation. This is what we want to have by the time we're done with this video. We want to have a nice bluey green colored top here and then some colored text. We also seem to want to change the font and the sizing of the image. So this is our goal by the end of this. But in order to get there, we have some things that we need to look at together. First off, I'll remind you of what our stuff looked like without any styling. So it's all um, just basic text and we have a big image at the bottom. And when it comes to CSS, um, something you want to keep in mind is that we always go on the most specific rule. I'm going to remind you of that as we start going, but let's go ahead and get started by reminding you of the inline styling that we saw earlier when we were talking about attributes. Let's go ahead and add some styling here. We're going to go and make the title text blue. Cool. So we can see that it's blue. We can see that we've added some styling through inline styling, but what if I wanted to style the list item, but I wanted to style all of the list items. Well, then I would have to have a styling tag here. Oops. Right? And then I would have to copy it down here, and I would have to have it here, and it would have to be in every single list item. And that's not really great. That, that can be kind of messy. We can start losing track of where styles are. It can be just kind of a bit of a mess. So instead, I want to go through with you some ways to use CSS to accomplish the same task. So I'll go ahead and remove those. Let's get started by looking at how we write CSS. So let's go ahead and look at the heading tag. So that's H1 here. And let's do something with it. So let's tell CSS we want to use the heading tag. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up the area for us to type inside of. And the way that this works is everything inside of these braces will be applied to this type of item. So let's make it color blue like we did earlier. So the way that this works is we grab the attribute that we want to change. We tell it what we want to change it to. And then we finish it off with a semicolon to say, OK, the rule is done. Cool. So we have a blue heading now. Awesome. But then what if I wanted to, for example, change the color of the list item instead? So let's change that. OK, now they're all blue. What if I only wanted to change the color of the first list item and not the rest of them? Well, now I can't really do that here, but maybe what I can do is make this list item different from the other ones. So one of the ways we can do that is by giving it an ID. So let's give it an ID. So an ID is just an attribute similar to when we added styling. It's an attribute that we give it a value. So we're going to go ahead and say first item. So I want you to notice that we've added an ID to the list item, but it isn't different from the other ones. The reason being is that li still applies to this item. We haven't changed anything. It's still a list item. It just now has an ID. So we want to work with the ID. And the way that we tell CSS that we're working with an ID is we say hashtag and then the name of the ID, which is first item. And then we can go ahead and change something. So let's say we want the color to be different. So color orange. Great. Now our color is different for the item that we've given the ID to. But what does that mean for us? Does that mean 
all of the rules that we put here are only going to apply to the first item and the LI no longer applies? Well, let's look. What if we add, instead of a color change, we add decoration? There we go. Now you can see that there's an underline, but it's blue. It hasn't gone back to black. And the reason for that is that LI still applies to our item and first item, the, the ID that we've added also applies to this item, but they don't overlap. So it's not like we ignore the LI item that we've talked about. We just sort of combine them together. And now we have a mixture of the two rules. But the reason why we changed the color instead of having both colors at the same time is because we always have the most specific value. So an ID is only applicable to one item. So therefore it's more specific than the LI tag. Okay, that's great. Now we know how to use IDs. But what if I wanted to change two of the list items that we had. I can't add the same ID to different items, but what I can do is add a class name. So let's say we change it from ID into class. And instead of first item, I'm just going to change the name to some item. OK. Let's style that. So when we're using a class, we instead of using a hashtag, we use a period. And then we type the class name, so some item. And then we can do the same thing we did before, text decoration. All right, so now we're seeing again, here we have the underline. Let's go ahead and add the class to the last item too. Okay. Now they both have the underline. Now we're seeing that we can use a class to apply the same styling onto different items. And this doesn't have to apply to only list items. We can add the class some item to anything here, really. Now we, we can apply it to a paragraph. We can really put it anywhere and it will work for us. So let's remember that we have the ID first item. I'm going to go ahead and put that back and we can look at what happens. And instead of allowing the underline, let's say no underline. So none, no text decoration. I want you to notice that now it's gone. So the reason it's gone is because we go by how specific the rule is. So we can have many different list items. We can have different class names, but we can only have one ID, one unique ID. And so the ID is considered the most specific item. And so it takes priority. Okay, great. So now that we've learned a little bit about how CSS works, we can start to build things up to look like that goal that we had um, at the beginning of the video. So I'll remind you, look something like this. We can go ahead and get started. So first thing, I'm going to remove some of the changes that I've made here, just so we can get it back to looking the way we expected. Whoops. Okay. I think we're looking pretty much back to normal now. So let's start by adding some changes. So I want some of this area to look different from everything else. I want this section here to be separated. So one of the ways we can do that is we can call this section a header. OK, so now we've encapsulated this area. We've moved it all into one section together. So now this is the header. So let's maybe do some styling for that. So if we remember, we're using an HTML tag 
So we just need to have the name by itself. We don't need a hashtag or a period. And we want to change the background color. Something to note is when we change a color, it changes the color of the text. When we write background color, it changes the color of the background. Something to keep in mind. So we want our background color to be a very specific color that we've chosen over here, which I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy. And if you're curious about what this value is, it's a hexadecimal number. So the way you read hexadecimal is you separate it like this. And these are their own values, which is red, green, and blue. Okay? So if I had no red, no green, but blue, it looks like this. If I had only green values, it looks like this. And if I had only red values, it looks like this. In mind and you can look into that in your own free time but this is the color that we've got going for us that's pretty good i i believe our color was supposed to be white so let's change the text color to white okay and we're also going to add something called padding so padding is space between the content of our area and the border around it. So if I add ten pixels of padding, you can see now that there's some extra space here below, or sorry, to the left and to the bottom. There's also spacing to the right and from the top. If I make it something crazy big, you can really see how much space is being added. So when you write padding like this, it adds padding to all the four corners. If you want to be more specific, you can go padding left, which will only add the padding to one part of it. You can also add padding top, padding right, padding bottom. We're just going to have regular old padding for our purposes. OK, now I think we want the info to be a specific color as well. Now the info isn't held in any kind of special way. Like we don't we don't have anything keeping this part along with the unordered list. See how they're they're not kept together. So what we need is a div. A div tells the HTML that everything inside of this div inside of these tags is meant to be considered as together. It doesn't look like much, but it has a lot of purpose behind the scenes. So we're also going to give this div an ID. We're going to call it info. And actually, I had forgotten to remove this one, so we already had the lower div at the bottom. OK, so you can see we added the div, but nothing's really changed. The reason being that a div doesn't actually do much for us unless we add some styling or some attributes or things like that. So let's go ahead and add some styling. So I don't want any div on the page to do something. I just want the ID info to do something. So let's grab that ID. And we're going to go ahead and give it some information. So we want the color be the same as above. So let's go ahead and copy that. And we're also going to add margin. So margin is a little bit different from padding. So if you remember padding from the outside of the container, add spacing between the outside and the content, right? So margin adds spacing outside of that containing box. So just for a visual, if we look at header, if we add margin left 
100 px. px is pixels. You can see that it moved the whole box, right? But if we had padding, it only moves the text, the content inside the box. It doesn't move the whole box, okay? We're gonna add a little bit of margin here because that's what was done in the example. So we're gonna add margin. We're gonna add 10 pixels. Okay, it's not super noticeable. We can add a whole bunch of margin to make it a little bit more, more, more noticeable for us. Or not at all. Is it noticeable? No, it's not noticeable. That's okay. Um, that's what's done in the example, so we're just gonna go ahead and go with it. Oh, I know why. Pardon me. Info. There we go. Now it's looking better. And that happens sometimes. We get a little confused. It's okay. So we can see our margin. We've moved it um, from the corner about 10 pixels. We've also moved it from the top and the right and the bottom because we have not specified margin left, margin right, margin top, or margin bottom. So if we change it to 100, you can see how much it moves. Right, so we're only going to be doing 10 pixels. And it's moving the box itself. So if we change the background. You can see that there's no padding. It's just the margin. OK. All right, we're looking pretty close. If we go back to our example. It seems like we're getting closer to the result that we want. Let's look at what's next. So I think we want to update the dog image to be a little bit different in size. So let's go ahead and we already have an ID for dog. So let's grab the ID dog and let's change the height to 350 pixels and we'll change the margin to 10 pixels. Give it some space in the corners. There we go. Now it's not hugging the corner anymore. All right, we're looking pretty good. I think we're getting much closer to what we were looking for. Um, the next thing that we want to do is use a different font. So right now the font that we have is a serif font, which means that it has these little corners and ticks on them. So when you look at the font, it has extra details um, on each of the items. See how the M has like some detailing on the on the corners, like sharp little edges and designs on them. We don't want those. So let's go ahead and change it for everything. So let's grab the tag body. Let's maybe change the font family to sans serif. There we go. OK, so you can see now that the font style no longer has those decorations in the corners, right? It's a, a different type of font family now. The last thing that we want to do is import a font from the Internet. So this is pretty easy to do. I already have one available, so let's go ahead and paste that in. So what we're telling CSS is import from this URL which is called Open Sans. And we're going to go ahead and use that font, which is Hebo or Open Sans. We're importing both. We can change the body family to be Hebo. But we're also going to keep Sans Serif here too. So what this says is if we have it available, use Hebo. But if for some reason, maybe the, um, the Google API that we have here, maybe they took it down or maybe it's out of service. If the browser can't find it, then just use sans serif. OK. Great, so we've changed the font and now we're looking like what we had in the example. So we've learned about IDs, we've learned about classes, we've learned how to use CSS with all those different items and tags. 
we've learned about specificity, and we're well on our way to creating really interesting looking designs for our web pages. So now I'll invite you to move forward and take a look at challenge two and see what you can do with it. And I'll meet you back here for the next section.